You are listening to the Paranormal Chronicles Radio Show. Here is your host, paranormal researcher and author of the best-selling A Most Haunted House, Gavin Lee Davis. Hello creatures and welcome to the Paranormal Chronicles Network. I am your host G.L. Davis, author of the best-selling Haverford West based A Most Haunted House and founder of the ParanormalChronicles.com, but you can call me Gav. Welcome to this action-packed show. Before we begin, please subscribe to this channel as over 2,000 of you have already done so for a chance to win some great paranormal books and thank you to the humongous 600,000 plus of you that have visited the paranormalchronicles.com that is phenomenal don't forget to follow the paranormal chronicles on instagram for exclusive pictures please welcome sixth books as the show's new sponsor sixth books is a leading publisher of body mind spirit books as well as the paranormal consciousness parapsychology and the afterlife on tonight's action-packed show we will cover the men that chased bigfoot UFOs buzz in the ISS, a disturbing case of a man who pretended to be a ghost to molest women. We investigate the Haverford West ghostly monk with exclusive pictures. Join us as we speak to Andrew D. Bentley on his book in a powerful interview that for some will be difficult to listen to, but will change your thoughts on how we view death. It is possibly the most important interview we have ever conducted at TPCN. This and more on the Paranormal Chronicles Network show on with the show. Welcome to the Paranormal Chronicles News Roundup. Please note one of the news reports deals with a sexual assault incident and may not be deemed suitable for all listeners. Viewer discretion is advised. On with the news. Are aliens watching Earth? UFO spotted on NASA satellite coverage. This is published 25th of April. Hot, hot, hot. If you are one of the first people to listen to this download. Strange footage has emerged of bright lights flashing on the International Space Station's live feed. And conspiracy theorists are claiming it is an uncloaking UFO. They say whatever the object is, it must be huge as it was going under the ISS at some point distance. Other UFO hunters have claimed the mammoth alien craft could be 900 feet, that's 300 meters, in diameter and fly from the Earth to the Moon in less than a minute. However, experts had debunked the claim and say the lights are simply reflections or lens flare from the camera. Whatever the object was, it must have been huge since it was going under the International Space Station at some distance, the user posted. Another prominent UFO hunter, Scott C. Weirin, had his own theory about the footage. He said it was not six separate UFOs, but one one large one that could be as large as 900 feet, again 300 meters in diameter. This UFO is going to blow your mind. I mean, it just shows up as a single glowing orb, he wrote on his website, UFO Sightings Daily. Then it divides into about four to six flashing orbs. During this time, the UFO is revealed partially, meaning it is not six UFOs, but one a large UFO of about 300 meters in diameter. Such a craft has the capability to fly from Earth to the moon in under a minute. It's not light speed, but it's fast, he said. However, Nigel Watson, author of the UFO Investigations Manual, said it was a simple explanation for these baffling lights. Often the images shown to be of UFOs near the ISSS are reflections or lens flare from the camera he told Mail Online. He said the flashing lights in this clip were probably just a piece of space junk or a satellite in the distance. Usually people who post videos like this are more concerned about adding music to the soundtrack and putting ridiculous ideas about UFOs uncloaking themselves like a spaceship in Star Trek, he said. So what do you think about that? Do you think that NASA is aware of UFOs in space in our orbit? Bigfoot spotted in Europe. Fearless bloke chases ape-like figure through wilderness. Bizarre footage has emerged that appears to show the folklore legend alive and out for a stroll. This was reported on the 13th of 
April. The video captured from a dash cam reveals a large ape-like figure walking alongside a main road. Closer Luck does not provide any more clarity and we have included a picture of this creature for your perusal to see what you think. The fearless bunch swung their vehicle around and decided to pursue the creature on foot. Running through heavy snow they eventually came within meters of the unknown figure but it quickly scurries away before we can get a closer look. The footage was originally captured in the Russian city of Severodonovix on February the 18th but it has gained popularity after being shared on popular YouTube conspiracy page Bigfoot Tony Today and viewers were quick to speculate. One comment read this has got to mean Bigfoot is in Russia. Another added great footage here I love how fearless the Russians generally are you should see how they react around bears. If a third simply stated this one looks genuine. What do you think about this? Our final news story is the one where viewer discretion is advised so if you have a sensitive disposition you may want to tune out. Now, Devon Rapist who pretended to be Ghost has been jailed for 26 years. This was published on the 19th of April. A rapist who manipulated a girl into having sex with him by pretending to be a ghost has been jailed for 26 years. Liam Clark knew she was terrified of evil spirits and used that to exploit her. Exeter Crown Court has heard. Clark, 35 of credit and Devon, was convicted of four rapes, three sexual assaults by penetration, sexual activity with a child and eight counts of indecency or indecent assault. Judge David Evans said your offense ending across the years was monstrous. The court heard how Clark's victims was petrified of the occult following a bad experience during a Ouija board game. He made strange noises at night which left a 15 year old girl terrified and pushed notes under her bedroom door claiming to be from the ghost. Pretending to be the spirit he then made threats to the teenager and told her the only way of getting rid of the demon was by having sex with him. Sentencing Clark Judge Evans said she said she did not want to have sex with you but you threatened her repeatedly. You made deliberate use of her deep fear of ghosts and spirits. Fences took place between 1997 to 2016 in Torquay, Crediton and Hampshire. Clark was arrested in July last year and found guilty at trial in March. He also repeatedly abused two young girls in Southampton by putting coins in his underwear and getting them to play hide and seek. Clark was put on the sex offenders register for life and made the subject of a sexual harm prevention order which restricts his future contact with girls. If you have a news item you'd like to share with us at the Paranormal Chronicles Network, then visit our Facebook page, The Paranormal Chronicles, as over 35,000 of you already have done so. Together, we explore the unknown. Before we carry on with the show, it's that time of night where I like to crank up the spirit box and hear what's out there. Pull the strings. This is best selling author Elaine Kelly from Special Detectives. Tell the author as we enter the darkness on a paranormal quest. Hello, Elaine Kelly here. Welcome to Special Detectives. Hello, Elaine Kelly here. Hi, this is Lee Kruk, uh, from the Paranormal Cosmos, and we are actually, uh, me with in Pembrokeshire, we are based in Pembrokeshire, we are exploring the unknown. This is the Authenticus Pro Gamer, and together we explore the unknown. Hi, this is Dave Dominguez, host of the Event Horizon Show, featured on the ParanormalChronicles.com. Just wanted to give a quick update to our wonderful listeners and let them know that the Event Horizon Show will be back very soon with more interviews delving into today's latest stories on the paranormal. Be sure to listen in and join us as together we explore the unknown. Merry glove stick. Merry glove stick. The ParanormalChronicles.com has been dedicated to exploring many of Pembroke's spooky sightings and exploring many of its myths and the Paranormal Chronicles has put Pembrokeshire paranormal phenomenon on the media map with its exclusive report. The Paranormal Chronicles in-depth study, investigation and research gave Clay Lane outside of Halford West a mantle of one of the most haunted roads in Wales. Our investigation into the Owl Man at St Thomas, the Devil Hound at Land Mill and the Stainton Spectre has fueled the imagination of many across the county. 
Pembrokeshire Haunted Road Trip, created by the Paranormal Chronicles and its sister site Pembrokeshire Beyond, urged paranormal enthusiasts to seek out paranormal adventure, searching for the myths and legends at Nevin, the Flying Coffin of Clarbiston, the Waterston Lady, the Teenage Phantom at Newgale, the Ghost Children of St. Govan, and many, many more. In fact, we have collated over two and a half thousand reports in Pembrokeshire alone in the last four years. The Paranormal Chronicles is truly dedicated to researching and investigating the wondrous paranormal events in Pembrokeshire, West Wales. All that said, we have one character, one spectre, one haunting that I personally have been investigating for over 20 years. This character has had more sightings than of any paranormal entity in Pembrokeshire. Over 300 years it has been seen. It is the monk of Haverford West. And now we have a new site to report and our own pictures for you to examine and make your own conclusions on. Now the monkey makes his way down Union Hill that many locals have walked or driven from the waist down. He is invisible as he travels a long buried and forgotten footpath. This shadowy spectre has been seen many times with a first known report made in 1729 of a cowled and dark apparition making its way down to the old Augustinian Priory. Mr Bob Riches of Haverford West reminisced about a sighting in the 1950s. 50s, the end of Key Street, where a hooded figure was said to disappear into a gate at the bottom of Union Hill, while more recent reports have seen a hooded figure making its way up Tower Hill at the top of Halford West and seen a monk-like figure traversing the Rifleman's Field near Winch Lane. On the evening of the 25th of March 2018, a lady is walking her dog at the Priory Rune at approximately 10pm when she was startled by what appeared to be a figure stood in the corner of one of the ruined abbey buildings. It was illuminated by a head torch. Fearing it was a living person skulking in the darkness, she quickly hurried away, but her dog froze and barked hysterically. When she turned back, the torch revealed that no one was stood there. The figure had vanished in the blink of an eye. Now, as interesting as that may be, could it easily be just a person or possibly a misidentified shadow or bricks within the wall resembling a person? Then, on Monday the 2nd of April 2018, we received another message through our Facebook page from a gentleman called Mark who said that while walking again, a dog, at night at the old Priory Ruin, that he saw a figure walking towards him in the mist. He said in his torchlight, the mist looked like it was forming into a shape, the shape of a man. He claims that the human shape mist appeared to have a hood and he could make out the movement of an arm. The dog again reacted defensively, but as quickly as the figure had appeared, it had vanished. But this is where it gets interesting. On December the 4th, 2017, at approximately 1.45 a.m. on a disappointing cloudy night to capture supermoon pictures, I ended up at my old haunt, you've got it, the Priory Ruins, to take some pictures and use the opportunity to investigate my old friend, the Priory Monk. I've charted his path over the years and start from St. Mary's Church, retracing the steps of the first of two monks at Haunt Hafford West. That's right, there is two. The second is the Brown Monk that takes a different route and heads into Hafford West towards the Friars. He is seen walking down the high street. Taking bursts of pictures along the way, I took several dozen at the ruins and headed home. I am not gifted in that I have no abilities, I witness very little on investigation, and since I suffered a mini stroke, I'm more susceptible to tiredness than anything. But during my saunter to the ruins, I did feel it as if I was being watched, and several times felt that the rain and mist was very clumped together in places which in itself could be an atmospheric solution to what's happening down there. As per usual with all my pictures and audio, I volunteer them to independent researchers for data analysis. I've had them back and a few were very, very interesting, which I'm more than happy to share with you. Before the crazed keyboard warriors start tutting, shaking their heads, stalking me on social media, and then I gotta block them, cause you think you know everything there is about time, the universe, and the human mind when you don't. Hold your horses, because I am appealing for everyone to investigate this using your own methods and come up with your own hypothesis. Don't attack people, investigate. I am well aware that the power of suggestion is very much at play. In one of the pictures it may just be a person wandering around late at night. I was and that in some cases you can't really see anything until it's pointed out okay. So let's have a look. If you're struggling to make out anything in the pictures head to theparanormalchronicles.com for a better look along with a history of the site along with theories, pictures and witness sightings. In picture A like the witness claimed a mist appears to be taking the form of a hooded figure. Yes very convenient but what was of interest is that the mist seems to be in two layers to create this effect almost three dimensional in relation to its surroundings. It would be approximately five foot three inches tall and around 50 centimeters broad. The large 
large head area does look hooded and an arm could be possibly part of the form. Again, it's not a solid shape and more than likely just a mess illuminated by the camera. What do you think? In this second picture taken across the abbey, there appears to be a solid figure stood at ground level. Unlike the mess apparition, this has more form and could be possibly just another person strolling the ruins with the same motive as I. The light that is identified as an orb I can confirm is one of the street lights from the poet's corner area, so I've been able to duplicate it several more times. The figure I have not. Could the two incidents be related or are they merely coincidental? It was the same night after all. I will include many of the pictures for you to peruse here as well as on the paranormalchronicles.com website. I would like to hear your feedback. What do you see? What are your theories? Can you pick up something we have missed? Have you had your own experience with a monk? If you have any form of interest and you live in Pembrokeshire, then I strongly encourage you to investigate. Remember, an investigation is more than a few hours. In my last two main investigations, taking two years each in total to compile the evidence, interview the subjects, and do the intensive research into the history of the alleged phenomenon. If you are looking for more Pembrokeshire paranormal phenomenon to investigate, then visit the paranormalchronicles.com, which has exclusive reports, first-hand accounts, and phenomenon no no one else has investigated. I shall continue the search, I shall continue the investigation, but what is more effective than one man with a lifetime of passion and experience to investigate our friend the ghostly monk, but an entire county of people. The hunt is on. Sixth books will take you to other worlds, haunt you, open your mind, and push you far beyond the veil of the unknown. Sixth Books is a leading publisher of books on the body, mind, and spirit, the paranormal, consciousness, ancient wisdom, and the afterlife. Explore today, learn today, open your mind today, read today. Visit sixth-books.com today. The world as you know it is about to change. My guest tonight has written something so incredibly and profoundly important. This may be the most important interview we have recorded at TPCN. This is not just for those interested in documented and witnessed paranormal activity, but for those entrenched in grief, struggling with bereavement and looking for comfort after the death of a loved one. High Love Still Connected by Andrew D. Bentley is a beautifully written account of love, loss, grief and clear evidence detailing influence and actions of someone no longer with us. The paranormal is often deemed as a terrifying and confusing experience and while this interview may be difficult for some to listen to, father of two, Andrew D. Bentley, has witnessed and documented something incredibly beautiful and life-changing which will give hope and comfort to all. High Love Still Connected is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble and through sick-books.com. This book will document love, heart smashing, tragedy and the notion that love truly does not die. After the interview I implore you to please read Andrew's beautifully written book as not only is it a companion for those suffering with loss and grief but the proceeds of this fantastically written book are donated to exceptionally good causes. This is an amazing interview with an amazing man. Hello Andrew, thank you very very much for joining us today. How are you? I'm very well, thank you Gavin and thanks for having me on. Thank you very much. Congratulations on your beautiful and powerful book, High Love Still Connected, available through Sixth Books, which is not only a detailed and comprehensive account of evidence of interaction between the living and those that have passed away, but also a comforting book for those struggling with grief and loss. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. That's that's really kind of you to say. Yes, uh, you covered a, a pretty well what what the book's trying to do there. You know, it's it, it's covering bereavement, but also my experiences of what happened uh, after my wife passed away. Before we begin with anything, we need to talk about Winnie. Can you tell us who she is? She she was from Belgium, and I met her uh, in the late '90s when I was working in Belgium. I joined a company where she was working, and uh, and so you know started a friendship with her uh, as a colleague first of all. Yes. She was, um, and then some years later, she uh, she she actually moved to, to the UK uh, to be with me when I'd moved back. She was a well, in my eyes, a unique person. She was, you know, incredibly talented and intelligent. Uh, she spoke five languages. Um, she was a, a really gifted communicator, um, not just in languages, but uh, through languages, but also through emotions as well. Very in touch with her emotions, and she taught me so much about 
those things, you know, just tapping into your emotions and being open. And so she was a she was a super teacher, but but also very open to learning new things. And she touched everybody, um, everybody that knew her, that worked with her, that was friends with her, any contact people had. I'm certain that it would be a positive experience for for everybody that did that. So she was, yeah, she was one in a million for me for sure. It comes across in the book just how connected you both were. There was undeniably you were both very much in love absolutely yeah she um and in fact she she sort of saved my life twice in fact not just once but twice and um, not not sort of physically saving my life but yeah. but sort of you know spiritually and and something far more profound than 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 physically actually and so you know that's that's detailed in the book as well but you know, she just lifted me up twice, you know, before and after her passing. Her death is detailed very powerfully and will resonate with anyone who's lost someone. How difficult was it to revisit those moments and describe her passing? Um, it was difficult, for, uh, no question about that. Um, but I was sort of, when, when I was writing the book, I was in this sort of perfect moment like a bubble if you like of where everything came together I'd, I'd been recording just my thoughts and reflections and and all the signs that were coming my way that were in my path somehow all, all those things were, were noted you know even even before she 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 passed away these experiences and memories were were, were still very alive and i i saw the importance of writing about the the feelings of loss and bereavement and, and all the things that led up to it you know i saw that as more as really important you know to share that to be honest i was glad to get past that chapter yes. you know I mean? yes. yeah i could imagine <laughs> and, you know people that are close to her, you know my daughters for example they 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 tend to skip that chapter because you know it's it's all very still very fresh in the memory albeit four and a half uh, years ago it was a tremendous shock it was very sudden and tragic in the scheme of things and she was also very young yes she was she was 47 well we thought she was in relatively good health but was suffering a few ailments which we put down actually to, to menopause she actually had a brain tumor which didn't reveal itself until you know, it was far too late, in fact, and was inoperable. And so, you're right, it, it was very sudden in that sense. At the same time, I, I realised very, very soon after that in the bigger picture, the bigger scheme of things, you know, at least we had a period of five weeks with her when she was uh, in hospital, trying to recover at the time, but um, at least we had this time with her that, you know, some people are not afforded, you know. Bra brain tumours and haemorrhages and things like this can can take people away immediately. So whilst it was very sudden and shocking, yeah, I was able to see uh, there were lots of things for me to be thankful for as well. It's sad and tragic in life that we spend our whole lives looking for that one person to complete us, to share our life journey with. And you detail that beautifully in the book. The way you articulate your connection, your love, your feelings, it's beautiful. Anybody who's ever been in love can relate to. And then she's taken away from you. I read the book having experienced a lot of grief and bereavement over the last year and it just shook me to my core. This is where the book takes a different turn and then this is where this book becomes something very melancholic and sad and turns into something absolutely wonderful and beautiful. And now in the book there are many examples of Winnie's undeniable influence and reconnection into your life after a death. Now the book has many, many, many examples, which I, I really encourage people to go and read. But could you share one or two of these examples with us of how Winnie, after a death, re-entered your life? You're right. Um, it's quite difficult to pick some of the favourites, really, because there were so many things happening. And, and this is what I tried to, to capture, that it was a very holistic sort of experience, if you like, you know, that, that all sorts of th different things happening. So there were signs, there were messages, and there were, and in, in addition to that, sort of very vivid dreams. And, and perhaps I'm, I'm sure people have had these dreams where you, you realize it's not a normal dream, it's something more than a dream. I still have memories, very clear memories of these dreams as if they were happening in the physical world. You know, those were the, if you like, the categories of the, the sort of things that we experienced. <clears throat> I thought that the two stories, if I may share. Of course. The first sign that really opened my eyes t to me thinking that something was going on, you know, that increased my perception and, and I suppose receptivity, if you like. This was the, yes. the catalyst as such. This was six weeks after her death um, and I, dis I decided to go and see a medium. 
somebody who was recommended to me. And so I went to see her um, and had a, a, a truly wonderful experience in terms of, you know, sort of affirmation that, that Winnie was was still with me, still with us, still around. There were lots of things that the, through the medium she said that were completely personal to us, not possible to guess or to estimate. And so, you know, th this this happened on this day and I just had this sort of calm elation um, after the, the session with the medium. And then the, the very morning after the uh, talk with the medium, I got up and I was making my way to the kitchen uh, just to have breakfast. The, the window, one of the windows of my house, it, it um, this was in October and there was quite some, normally quite some condensation developing on the yeah. windows. Sort of automatically reached for, the t for a towel to go and wipe it down as I usually did. And then I was sort of stopped in my tracks when sort of just the, before, before I'd, you know, wiped the window, I just realised that there was a shape on the window. It was completely unusual and that shape was a heart. And this was to be the recurring theme of, of the, the signs and shapes that, that would be in my path, um, you know, ever since. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the key that I thought here was the, the timing of this. That firstly, it was, it was unusual that the, the window was, you, you know, wasn't covered with a, with a, with a sheet of condensation if you like yes it was just just this heart shape and nobody else in the house um <laughs> you know so this really opened my eyes and you know the timing of it I, in my mind i thought was more than coincidental and you know i i, I work in science you know my, my day job is is working for you know in science and so I'm, I'm sort of naturally sceptical, I suppose, of things and will really challenge uh, some of these things happening and not just completely accepting them blindly. So, you know, I've very much taken that approach with all the things that happened and, and things that are in the book. So that, that was the that was the first one that, that set it all off, really, in terms of a sign. And the second one I'd like to share of with course. you, this is more a message um, rather than a sort of physical sign that I found. This was a message and the day uh, when he passed away, I started writing in a, in a book. All the thoughts and reflections I was having, it really helped me to, uh, to take note of these things, you know, just, just, just writing down anything. You know, it was pu purely personal to me. I'd, I didn't realize that it would, would materialize into a book at the time, but you know, at the time it was just for myself. And on the day she, she passed away, I wrote down that a little tree that we'd planted in our garden some years ago as a green gauge plum tree was, was always going to be special to me. The reason for this was because when she was in hospital, um, sort of at the time, in, in this five week period where after her, her brain hemorrhage, she was actually starting to recover and, and go through sort of some sort of rehabilitation. And, you know, we, we were visiting her. Um, every day, multiple times a day, and we were taking her things into the hospital, little treats, little chocolates, and I, and I was taking in some plums from uh, some green gauges from this from our little tree. Um, she she somehow this made a connection with her. She, she wasn't really able to to speak. You know the 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 hemorrhage had 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 yes. uh, reduced her ability to to actually um, speak. She was very able to you know tell us what she you know through body language etc. And, and so when I offered her this plum, this first plum from the tree, you know, it's like a light switched on for her, uh, you know, like a connection to home, you know, and she grabbed it. And so we, we had this lovely moment of, of connection and, and sort of joy, if you like, you know, and, and, and humor that she grabbed it uh, with such quick hands, yes. you know. You know, and so this, this memory was, was very important to me. And so I, I wrote it, you know, I just wrote it down on pretty much, I think it was the day or the day after she, she passed away. Why is that a sign? It does, it's because I think the second time I went to this same medium, it was about six months after she passed away. Uh, one of the messages that came through um, via the medium was, um, this medium, she was, she was somebody that could, let's say, see images, if you like, projected on her mind's eye. Yeah. So, so if you imagine we have our own mind's eye, we can think of, of memories, we can picture them on our own mind's eye. Well, um, Winnie was able to project images onto the mind's eye of the medium. And so the medium just said, oh, she's showing the both of you planting a small tree. Um, and so, yes, and yes, so, <laughs> yes. Um, you know, I, I immediately made the connection to, 
what she was trying to say and sort of this was her way of showing that she knew you know how important it was to me and and she knew uh, somehow my thoughts and feelings and so this to me um showed that yeah, she was still very much around, somehow creating new new memories, even though she's not here in the physical uh, world. Had you believed in anything like this before Winnie's death? Yes, in a in a sort of a, I would say in a general sense. I, I as a sort of a young teenager, I think you know, sort of did did a few things with my friends and my family uh, in in you know possibly reading books or maybe even playing with Ouija boards and things like that, and so. Somehow, even from that those early teen years, I had a, this thought, this cloudy thought, I suppose, and this cloudy belief that there was something beyond just the here and now and the physical world. And that sort of progressed. I, I read a few more books and then learned a lot more about these things through through Winnie. Yeah, it, it's true to say that you know I was already halfway there, if you like, you know, in terms of belief, uh, being open, I think, to the possibility that this is certainly not the end. Do you think more people would have a similar experience if we were more open to the possibility of a realm of existence after death and viewed the passing more in a magical sense in that this is not the end, just simply the beginning of a new chapter? The simple answer is yes, <laughs> very much so. And, and the, the reason, I mean, in fact, this was, the, this, this was the whole reason why I wrote the book. You know, I, I realised that you know, being open to these possibilities and you know, not immediately shutting down the idea before even thinking about it or reflecting on it. You know, it seemed to me that you know, and, th and this is what compelled me to write the book. That I realised that all these things that I was writing down initially for myself, in fact, were going to be um, hopefully very, very useful for people who will lose their own loved ones. Firstly, being open to that idea and looking at books and, and other media, you know, where this is discussed and. You know, really just having an open mind about it, you know. I think it takes, in, in the case of my book, it takes maybe two to three hours maximum to, to read it. You know, it's quite short, even though it covers a lot a lot of things. Um, it's, it's quite short and, and perhaps thankfully so, you know, for such, a, for such a, a topic. But, you know, if people would just be open to, um, to, to look at it and read such material, it might just strike a chord when... When people most need it, perhaps years in in the future. This is what happened to me. In fact, you know, I drew upon what I'd read and what I'd experienced in the past, which gave me this open mind, and then and then somehow everything followed on from there. I personally could have done with this last year after my own personal experiences of grief and loss and it would have helped me look at it differently you know i fell into the abyss and i was you know that hollow cold feeling the depression the hurt the grief all those bad things and the whys and the hows and you question higher powers and the meaning of life and our own mortality and our own genetics and our own structure and i think this book would have helped me as it will help other people experiencing grief. If I'd had this book, I would have looked at it. I'm not saying I wouldn't have been hurt. I would have looked at it in a different way and I would have looked potentially more signs. But there was a connection. But there was someone trying to communicate or comfort me. The thing about the book is, great read, as you said, it is a short read, to digest from mm. blissful beginnings, tragic death in great detail, and then all these occurrences. And with these occurrences, not only do you just get a man's word on it, you also get all the photographs, evidence, other people's testimonials as well. So you now have a paranormal document of great importance. Flip side of that, you also have a book you can keep with you forever to help you and others deal with grief and loss. No, and thank, thank you for saying that. And, and, and sorry if I may just say as well, that was also what was driving me to write it, that... Um, and one of the things that's kept me going through, you know, through uh, to get over the um, grief, etc. And that was, you know, just being really wanting to make her proud of me, you know, and not not just my family, you know, for my daughters, etc. But but especially for Winnie to be 
proud of me for, for having put this together and to you know so that spurred me on no end and still and still does well winnie's presence her good soul is still being felt even now because all proceeds from your book are being donated to various charities which is profoundly incredible so this is not only a remarkable account of paranormal activity but a very honest detail in a grief and bereavement but it's also helping excellent causes what kind of causes are you helping there are three causes that just instinctively just seem to fit so the first one was perhaps not surprisingly a uh, sort of brain tumor sort of research and, and um, not just research but you know care charity if you like another one is a local homelessness charity we see people without homes every day and it just struck a chord somehow and and thirdly mental health charity you know this is increasingly a problem we can all see that and so you know this, this is where i wanted to direct it and if i can just say as well there were a couple of reasons why i wanted to you know de- donate the royalties to charity and and that was firstly of course i didn't want to don't like the idea of of um, sort of making money from from what happened and that was the first obvious uh, sort of thought and secondly you know in the in the quest really for to take out the the idea that when when readers um, would look at the book some might say well it's a, it's a nice story but it could be made up and so I, I somehow wanted to take this idea out that you know it wasn't written for any other purpose but to help people in need you know there's no ulterior motive there's no you know it's just just to get it out there what 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 happened to us and to share it and to you know to 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 take that you know that possible um thought out out, out of the equation it's incredible you can read a book which can help you give you better understanding of what may happen after we pass while helping really good causes so everybody out there if you enjoy reading hi love Still Connected by Andrew D. Bentley. Read it. You've heard it from the man himself. It's a very, very personal. If you're into your paranormal, it's not a nasty paranormal story with spinning heads and spewing pea soup and all of that kind of stuff. It's about love and loss and hope. And it's about helping other people, helping yourself. And by reading this book, you'll be helping people who are suffering with brain tumours, mental health and homelessness. Andrew, there's one last thing I really, really need to ask you, okay? Is she still here? Do you still feel her? Yes, I I do still feel her. As I I was saying, it's been four and a half years and there was the, at the start, in the first two or three years, I would say, you know, the the occurrences were far more regular and there were a lot more things happening than than are in the book, you know, (laughs) I just had to, you know, had had to make a selection almost, you know, Um, but, you know, over time there have been less signs and and visits and messages but that doesn't mean to say i don't feel that she's still here what what is apparent is that she she's there when i need her if i can put it like that it's it's you know if myself or my daughters or her mum you know have been going through let's say a difficult period on a few occasions in the fairly recent past there's been some sort of sign some sort of something in my path that I was not looking for, you know, just just there uh, as a little reminder uh, that she's still around, and 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 that's all it needs somehow, you know, that the 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 thought that she's still there, you know, looking out for us, and and I still feel this, and I have no doubt that I'll always feel this, you know, I, I just have to get in that place to think about her, and and yeah, she's she's somehow there, and the connection is is there again. She'd be so proud of you, Andrew. She really would. You've done a, you've done such a beautiful job of articulating such a difficult and mind-bending subject. It's absolutely brilliant. So uh, that is Andrew D. Bentley. His book is High Love Still Connected, available through Sip Books. As we said earlier, the man isn't selling it for personal gain. It's a brilliant story with lots of documented activity of the supernatural nature and it's for charity as well. So if you are dealing with personal grief or loss or anything about nature, it's it's just such a powerfully, incredibly beautiful written book. Some chapters will just stun you. They will literally just stop you in your tracks. You'll put the book down, you'll come back to it and proceed because it's powerful and it's a book you will go back time and time again andrew thank you very very much for your time are we going to have more books from you or is this the one well i'd say never never say never however i i feel that this is just a one-off you know i I never to be perfectly honest i never i never thought i'd write a book it never entered my mind never not once this was a 
yeah, something that, that, that came actually very, very easily. But I'd be surprised if anything else came came out. Um, <laughs> you don't want but... to help me with Ghost Sex, The Violation 2. <laughs> no, you don't fancy that one. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if I would be any help. Time, but, um, you know, I, I'm open, you know, I'm... I'm uh... <laughs> If you're used, so, to, if, if you want, if you want to receive death threats from fundamental Christian groups, you're more than welcome to help me write it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to write a second one, just in case anyone might be getting excited. I am not writing Go Sex a Violation Two. Andrew, your book is incredibly beautiful. It's well written. I would very much like to hear more from you, and you are always, always welcome here at the Paranormal Chronicles if you ever need anything. Thank you so very much for your time. Thank you. It's been a great pleasure. You are listening to The Paranormal Chronicles Network. Please remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Visit theparanormalchronicles.com for paranormal news, reports, pictures, audio, and video content. Find us on Facebook at The Paranormal Chronicles. Together, we explore the unknown. Serendipity Jewelry is beautiful handmade jewelry by a Native American artist. Treat yourself or a loved one to earrings, bracelets, and necklaces. All items are lovingly crafted using real natural crystals and materials. Join us on Facebook at Serendipity Jewelry and message us for further information to browse our items or for beautiful handcrafted gifts. Serendipity Jewelry spiritual beauty for you do you believe in ghosts a most haunted house is the true best-selling paranormal account that has chilled the world available on kindle on audible and in paper book dare you read dare you step inside a most haunted house